Let's talk a bit about the standards that make up the modern international life cycle assessment methodology. There are two documents to consider, and in this video we'll talk about ISO 14040. ISO 14040 is designated as the Principles and Framework Standard. That means that it includes, among other things, definitions of LCA phases, the relationships between them, conditions for value choices, which we'll address in a later video, and critically, limitations of the LCA, that is, what it can and cannot do as an environmental management tool. What it does not include, among other things, is details about the LCA technique or methodologies for each individual phase of the LCA. Those are saved for the sister document, ISO 14044. And again, this will be the topic of a later video. The ISO 14040 standard family for defining an LCA in this way was created out of recognition of a few facts. First off, we as consumers, producers, and as human beings inhabiting the earth, we're much more aware of environmental protection and the possible impacts associated with the products that we choose to use and the services that we choose to employ. Along with this awareness comes a desire to develop better methods for understanding the impacts we might be having and addressing them in a much more timely fashion and in a more effective way. This is the impetus for developing the LCA and standardizing it in this way that it has been. So, this reasoning and more is found in ISO 14040 in the Principles section. What else will you find in this document? Well, you'll find the essential characteristics of an LCA. Let's talk about them now, and at the same time, I'll share some of the so-called key features of an LCA that ISO provides. They'll show up here, or here, uh, while I'm talking about them, uh, while I'm talking about the characteristics. For one thing, to keep the video short, um, relatively speaking, but also to show the holistic nature of the LCA's construction and how the principles inform the methodology. Let's start with the perspective where we see that most LCAs consider the entire life cycle of a product. This is called the cradle to grave perspective, and it's installed to enhance accountability when carrying out an LCA. It might not be the right time frame for your study though, so do keep that in mind. Next is the focus. Even a simple product can have a lot of stakeholders. A well-executed LCA maintains its focus on environmental aspects and potential impacts of a product system. This means that economic factors, social factors, political factors, these are typically outside of the scope of an LCA. Next, the approach, of which there are two sub-principles. First is the principle of relativity. An LCA takes a relativistic approach. This means it doesn't deal with absolute measurements per se, but rather with levels and flows and values that are taken with reference to other entities. In fact, for a given LCA, we usually define an atomic reference unit, meaning that it's indivisible for the purposes of the study. That unit is called the functional unit of the study, and we will explore that concept some more another day. The second part of the approach is the iterative nature of the LCA. That is to say, a study phase is not simply completed and then we set it aside and we move on to the next phase. Completing an LCA may in fact require several rounds of reimagining the model or reassessing your product flows, changing the data we feed from one assessment phase based on the information we're receiving from the other phases. In this way, an LCA is not really a static document or a linear document, so much as a living, breathing reality check with respect to the status of your product systems. Next is transparency. Since LCAs are so complex, it's important that everything is documented thoroughly. Reasonings behind decisions, any interested parties, deviations that there might be from the recommended strategies, any external tools that you might use in conjunction with the LCA when you're carrying out your environmental assessment, everything needs to be thoroughly tracked. Hand in hand with transparency is comprehensiveness. 
a well-crafted LCA tries to consider all of the aspects of the product systems with respect to the environment, natural resources, and human health. The goal, of course, is to identify and assess those potential trade-offs associated with the product so we can make sure that they aren't getting buried anywhere in the study uh, or, say, allocated between phases and then we never account for them. You know, that's what it's all about, is accountability. And finally, the priority of a scientific approach to the LCA. Life cycle assessments can be qualitative at times, and sometimes decisions are reached based on, say, value choices, rather than strict rigor. However, LCA decisions are preferably based on natural science, or scientific approaches from other sciences like economics or humanities. If that's not possible, some other authority should still be referenced, like an international convention, for example. The bottom line is that the LCA is never performed without first rooting the methodology in a sound practice. Finally, a good portion of the document is dedicated to the layout of an LCA. What does it actually look like? Executing an LCA occurs in phases. And once again, these are followed more or less linearly, but due to the iterative nature of the LCAs, some phases we might have to revisit as the study goes on to modify or else completely change some parts of uh, the model to fit the data as it's being generated. So each of these phases has its own set of procedures and they'll each have their own video from the perspectives of both ISO 14040 and 14044. For now though, here's a brief overview just for some context. First is the goal and the scope phase. It's pretty straightforward, it's pretty self-explanatory. The goal is where the intent of the study is explicitly defined. What do we hope to accomplish by expending all this effort and resources? Likewise, the scope defines how deep into detail we're going to go within our study. Among other things, this is where we spell out our system boundary which is sort of the universe in which, we, in which we define our study taking place. It's an important concept, the system boundary, uh, and it requires some specific attention, so we're going to return to it at a later time. So next is the inventory analysis phase, and this involves collecting as much information as possible about the inputs and outputs to the system. We then try to quantify these stocks and flows for a product throughout its entire life cycle or for that portion of the life cycle that we've defined in the scope. So then the impact assessment, that's for evaluating the potential environmental impacts. So we look at everything we learned in the inventory analysis and we try to understand the magnitude and the significance of the results we found there. And in turn, the interpretation phase applies the findings of either or both of the previous two phases, and it evaluates them with respect to the goal and scope of the study. Now, based on those results, and depending on the target, the target audience of the study, we can then make conclusions and recommendations about our product system. That leads to our final two phases, the reporting and critical review phases. These are important for communicating the results of the study to the target audience of the study. There are several criteria for reporting the results of an LCA, such as the models you've selected, uh, the assumptions that you've made. It's really important then to verify whether or not the LCA has actually met the requirements for proper execution and whether it's being kept consistent with the principles of the study as they were set out. So this is the realm of the critical review phase. And again, both of these phases uh, they'll receive a lot more extensive coverage in future videos. This video explored the principles and framework of a life cycle assessment as laid out in ISO standard 14040. There's a lot of concepts that we introduced this time around and there's probably some questions that you have like what's a functional unit and what's the difference between an inventory and an impact? All of these questions and more will be addressed, starting with our next video, which takes a look at the sister document ISO 14044, laying out the requirements and guidelines for performing your very own product LCA. I hope to see you then. I'm Jamie Friend Ocumbo with EnviroPass. Thanks for watching.